welcome in everyone thank you for being here thank you for watching the stream my name is Delia aka Delia the Light welcome to the live twitch stream if you are catching this stream live please contribute to the chat leave your thoughts leave your comments this is an open conversation and we want everyone to participate if you're catching this replay on YouTube please leave your thoughts opinions agreements disagreements what have you in the comment section on YouTube and if you're watching this on YouTube please subscribe subscribe to my YouTube channel it's a free way to support my channel and it definitely helps a whole lot so I appreciate you for doing so today we have a very special guest she's my love she's my sister cousin her name is Hannah Mae she <laughs> oh, hello. recently completed her um, bachelor's degree in psychology and so today we're going to be talking about the colorism that exists in the black community and essentially how it's tearing us all apart for no reason so first and foremost Miss Hannah go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you well hello hello all um you know uh when I initially started school years ago I actually went down the culinary field and that was my main focus for a while but I always had an interest in you know psychology understanding people that was always mm -hmm. just something I was curious about and I decided to go back to school of course I just so happened to do it during the pandemic. Right. <laughs> and um, uh, and you know, finish up a psychology degree and be able to dabble more in understanding the group dynamics that help develop us as people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we could sit here and discuss all of that now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. So today... Oh, are you good, man? Okay, you're <laughs> making some crazy noises. Hey, Josie. Oh, I don't know why. I... Okay, so I changed my channel name, and now my emotes are being weird because they have a different, like, name, I guess. I don't know. So I can, I can see the email that you're trying to post, Jones, but it's not. It's, it's showing up as text instead of the actual email. I got to try and go in and fix mm -hmm. that. Um... Thank you for the emails anyway. <laughs> Good morning, Jones. Thank you for being here. Uh, so colorism essentially is, I mean, it, it goes so far back, but essentially it's this belief that those within a nationality, African American or black, um, Hispanic or Latin, Asian American, um, are superior or prettier or better or just all of these different words if they are lighter complected and we've seen this show up in the black community for a really long time um essentially it really began when we were enslaved because you got to think that any person that was enslaved any black person that was enslaved if they were a woman and they were raped by a white man and forced to have that child of course that child is going to be lighter complected than the woman herself most likely and child's going to be lighter complected than all the other enslaved people around them so i mean it's it's stuck with us for for this long of a time you know typically those people those enslaved people who were lighter complected tended to be you know house slaves or house niggas or whatever you want to call them and so this is what i believe created this divide um, Hannah, I just want to get your thoughts on kind of how you see colorism playing out day to day and just how it impacts you. Well, well, okay, we can break it down if we're speaking of just at a, at a random coffee shop. Mm -hmm. A person can be seen and because they're fair complexed, they're like, oh, well, you're definitely mixed with something. Mm -hmm. So you're prettier based off of those other features that we're associating with another ethnicity right and that kind of automatically kind of translates into oh you're pretty you're pretty for a black girl mm -hmm. or what are you mixed with automatically outright as right. a, like a conversation started right just the, <laughs> the audacity oh, you got pretty hair you got pretty hair but you mix with right like those experiences that many of us have mm -hmm. And so you you absorb that, mm -hmm. and then you 
you either you see it as a negative and you're like, okay, that's not fair to treat us that way. Mm -hmm. That's not something that should be pointed out on a regular basis Mm -hmm. or you um, absorb it in a different way and say, okay, well, I'm better. Right. That's how we start actually categorizing Category, uh, excuse me, categorizing each other and saying, "Well, you're up here because you look like this. Mm-hmm. You're down here because you're of a darker complexion, mm-hmm. and I'm better than you, or you're better." Like, actually internalizing all of that negativity and, right. and then treating each other as such. Exactly. So, yes. And it's, it's so unfortunate that, you know, not only are we absorbing it, but like you said, we're treating each other as such. So we might see someone who is a different complexion than us, either lighter or darker, and treat them a certain way because of it. And mm-hmm. like not knowing anything about that person, Nothing. just because, you know, and we can go all day and night and say looks don't matter and all this stuff, but the way we behave says otherwise. And then we yeah. have yeah. all of these supporting factors like the media, like Mm -hmm. The show Blackish was so phenomenal at really speaking about these different types of of issues. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, first of all, you know, Dre, the the husband in the show, Andre, he was like, well, I consider myself to be dark skin. And I'm looking at him like, no, you're not. (laughs) So there's that perception, right? Where do we draw the line at light skin Mm -hmm. versus dark skin? You know, at what shade do you cross over? (laughs) <laughs> to the other yeah. side, you know? To the other side. So that was his kind of internal struggle a little bit. And then, you know, we have um, that the fact that he worked in advertising, which was incredible because, mm-hmm. uh, what was it? He, he was asking for, well, he was like demanding kind of for um, more black people to be, you know, within their advertisements because I think they were, you know, creating some something and then there was a pitch and it was the typical, you know, family of four white people and so he's confronting his uh his bosses and his co-workers and saying yo like we need more black people in here so then yeah he he chooses a family and they're all very light complected black people you can tell they're black but they're definitely all light complected mm-hmm. and um i don't remember who it was that called him out i think it was one of his co-workers or maybe his son or something that said you know really like this this is the family that you chose w- weren't you looking for more representation or something like that yeah. and he didn't even recognize that he did it in the first place um so yeah i mean do you think or i don't even know how to phrase this question uh sheesh well i could say because because you've seen that show right i've seen it like Bits and pieces. I've never okay. watched it fully. Okay. But I'll like watch a special episode here and there. Okay. Okay. Um, of the episodes that they had, in addition to that one, okay, so let's, we could just talk specifically about that episode. Because um, I think this was all, it might have been two separate episodes, but in addition, so Rainbow is his wife, and mm-hmm. she's mixed. Her mom is black, her dad is white. Uh, so she's very light. And so. Between the two of them, Dre and Rainbow, they have four children. They have a set of twins, and then they have Junior, and then they have Zoe. Um, oh, no, no. I know the, the regular breakdown of the show. Oh, no, no. This is, like, for, for everyone else watching, too. Um, oh, okay, yeah. So, you know that Zoe, or not Zoe, Rainbow and Junior are, like, they're thick as thieves. And it's not necessarily just because they happen to be the two light skin characters, but they just happen to be thick as thieves, right? And then we have... Um, Oh, what's her name? The girl twin. Uh, I'm totally blanking on her name. Oh my goodness. Her herself. Right? I know, right? The actress who plays her. Um, yeah. What's her name? Um, oh, Diane. Because it's Jack and Diane. So Diane is darker complected than her twin Jack. Which, mm-hmm. it happens. I'm lighter than my twin brother. I mean, yeah. anywho. So they came up having this conversation. And basically, Andre was talking to Rainbow and Junior and saying, which a lot of people believe, like, oh, y'all have it easier in life because you're light-skinned. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to worry about as much. You don't have to do as much. You don't have this, you know, perception on you because you're light-skinned. Like, people don't believe you're dangerous. People don't believe blah, 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 blah. 
Um, so I would just like to know if any of those things have reigned true for you, you know, in your life thus far, or if you can think of any examples. Oh, she's, she's, hold well, on, y'all. She's closing, she's closing the blinds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, if any of those kind of hit home or resonate with you personally. Um, yes. Well, yes, and that I recognize it. Okay. That people think that way. Right. Not so much that I uh, fully believe it. Right. Because it depends on the situation. That's true. It depends on where you are. Mm -hmm. it, yes, do you sometimes get perceived at certain times? Of course. Mm -hmm. and that's also if you're behaving a certain way mm -hmm. but as soon as a certain, certain behavior that comes out and that person's like wait then it's no different mm -hmm. right and you get lumped in with everybody else and seen in the same negative light right. it's about how if someone believes that you're the good kind and so but as soon as you cross over whatever bar that person has of mm -hmm. what the good kind qualifies as mm. it's the same right so to a certain extent yes mm -hmm. until you cross that arbitrary bar right different for any group any workplace any personal relationship it, one thing could just trigger it out, out of nowhere that's true oh, oh my goodness yes do you maybe initially get that treatment of oh yeah this person this is yeah they're different they're not like all other ones right oh my favorite yeah they're different oh they're different yes i mean and even to your point of the statement about you know you're pretty for a black girl you know which my goodness gracious you know and and i i love that you mentioned the immediate perception or belief that if you are light complexed, if you have looser curly hair, uh, you know, just these different things that that make you appear to be mixed, um, that people just assume that. And there's a, a gal that I follow actually here on Twitch who says that she gets it all the time. She's very fair. She lives on the East Coast, so that definitely plays a role because she spends a lot of time in colder weather than we do here in, um, you know, in California on the West Coast. But um, <laughs> she's like, I tell people all the time, I'm just black. Like, I'm black mixed with black. Both of my parents are black. Like, this is just... <laughs> and that's this, it. Yeah, this just happened to be how my genes decided to express themselves. But... Because much every set of everything within us, mm -hmm. so we could produce everything. Right. The fair is the fair, and the dark is the dark. Exactly. And that's beautiful. And right. And we should accept it and cherish it all. So. Exactly. Exactly. And I wish we had someone else, like a Latin person or someone of Asian descent, to kind of get their idea or their perception. Because um, I feel, and this is just my personal opinion, when it comes to the colorism in their community... I don't know. It's it's a mix of both. I feel like Raylene really says, yes, there's so many shades of shades within the black community. Exactly. And we're all just black. Like, let's keep it all the way real. Um, sometimes it feels like, or I, the perception that I receive is that being lighter, like I mentioned, is better because you're closer to white. Right? So, and again, from the perspective of someone whose ancestors were enslaved, I can definitely see the benefit of being someone who's enslaved but being able to pass for white. Like, I completely mm -hmm. understand that. And that's not that person's fault, you know? Like, we don't yeah. get to choose what we look like. I don't get to choose what shade of, like, how much melanin I'm going to have in my skin. The fact that I have any is a blessing, point blank, period. Like, exactly. let's keep it all the way real. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank the heavens. Thank the ancestors that I have melanin, period. Yes. Like, Right. Thank right. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that's the, I think that belief or that perception across all community reigns true. 
you know, regardless of if you're of Latin descent or of Asian descent, if you can pass for white, if the closer you look, and it literally just comes down to skin color. Oh, Illusion, thank you for the subscription. Welcome into the stream, love. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Uh, the closer you look, and it's not even, it's the, the funniest thing is it's like, you don't look white. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. literally just skin tone. Like, they're not taking mm -hmm. into account, like, your eye shape. They're not taking into account your hair. They're not taking into account anything. It's literally just your skin complexion. That's it. The amount yeah. of melanin that we can see within your skin. Um, but think of it this way. Mm -hmm. Think of it this way. We were perceived as being less than. Exactly. Like less than human. So if we, if they thought, oh, you had an actual human be part of making you, mm -hmm. that means you're better. Even if you do favor the lacking half of your DNA, right? you still have some in you. So we expect you to be a bit better than the others. Right. So. That part. <laughs> yeah. We expect you, we expect you, we just expect a little, we expect a little more, you know? Yeah, we expect more from you. Yeah, we expect more. We think you're better, and we think you might smell good, and... Yeah, just, because, oh, yeah, you can't have that kinky hair. It right, stinks. it stinks. It's so dirty. It's so dirty. I mean, how do you even wash it? Oh, my gosh, I will never forget <laughs> the experience I had. I believe I was in seventh or eighth grade. Mm-hmm. Um, this was still, you know, when me and my mom lived in Orange County, mm -hmm. and I had my hair straightened. Mm -hmm. We sheen it, make it all shiny and nice. Yeah. And, and, and um, that olive oil sheen is non-negotiable. Like it has to. Exactly. That's an automatic. Right. Sure That's it is moisturized. <laughs> and this, I was, I think I was in my math class or something. Uh huh. And. This young girl that was just, you know, appeared at the mm -hmm, time, mm -hmm. thing, as if I wasn't the same age. Right. Um, <laughs> she sat behind me, and then she touched my hand and said, shouldn't you wash your hair? Your hair's oily. I had to, like, bring myself in. I am like, our hair's different. Like, that's just what I, I, I left it as. Right. I'm like, our hair's different. We don't treat it the same way. The, the qualities... That your hair being oily mean for you are completely different than what they mean for me. Exactly. Exactly. So instead of assuming that my hair is dirty and there's something wrong with it, why don't you ask, what do you have to do to keep up with your hair? Maybe you just don't know. And that's right. okay. Right. Right. Instead right. of assuming a negative. Yeah, they can hear you. Yeah. Ask the question. It's true. It's absolutely true. And oh my goodness, our hair. I mean, that by itself has a level of this like superiority complex right good hair right mm -hmm. you know and the fact of the matter is all of our hair has the ability to be straight or has the ability to be curly point blank period and it drives me crazy when um oh wait good morning friggy uh raylene said there was also this study that literally proved kinky hair is the cleanest of all i love that yeah. I, I love that. You for putting that. Right. I love Thank that. You so Thank much. you, really. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, like there's this, like my mom is always complaining about her hair. Always complaining about it. It's to this. It's to that. It's to this. It's to that. And I'm like, mm, we get the hair that we get, but it's up to us to learn how to care for it. Like Hannah will tell you firsthand, I'm always trying to get my hands in her hair. Y'all see how much hair, he <laughs> how much hair she has? Every time I see her, I'm like, yeah, Hannah, you trying to try play in your hair? What you trying to do, girl? <laughs> Every single time. And she has so much hair, and it's thick, and it's beautiful, and it's long, and it's like luxury to me. Now, the reason why her hair is that way is because, mm, I don't know, she takes care of it. It literally comes down I to try that. To. Right. I try. <laughs> and I know that it's a lot of work because it's a lot of hair, you know, and you got to take your time, and it's a process. And I think that's one of the things that we kind of struggle with in the black, black community is mm -hmm. taking our time and making it a point to make our the care of our hair a priority. The care mm -hmm. of our hair and also not being so attached to it. Like, I just cut off all my locks a couple days ago. I don't know, maybe it's been a week now. And I just got bored. Like, there was no attachment to it. I still got them in a bag. If I want to reattach them, my hair goes a couple more inches, I totally can. But It's yours. 
Yeah. Like, but it's just hair. Like, it's going to grow back. If there's one thing that hair is going to do, it's going to grow. If we take care of it. So, mm-hmm. tell me, tell me, tell me a little bit about how that's been for you growing up, Hannah. Having, having so much hair and big, beautiful hair. And just, you know. So, a lot, like, you know, when, um, I always wore it natural. Mm-hmm. In between. Um, my mom never, like, she wasn't, uh, oh, you have to always have your hair pressed kind of person. Or, mm-hmm. uh, you have to have it permed. I did try a perm when I was 12. Mm-hmm. And we didn't like it, so we never did it again. Right. Um, and we're like, nah, I don't need to do that. Mm-hmm. Don't need to add those chemicals to my head all the time. Anyways, it's finally being released that those things are uh, cause cancer. Yes. And we've known that for forever. Not only that, but the- all the girls on the boxes didn't even have perms. They just had silk presses. Yes. Mommy. And so that's what I just kept with. I would go mm-hmm. if I wanted my hair straightened. No. I would do a silk press. Right. But I would, you know, go in between of having that, having my hair braided or wearing just like a giant puff. Yeah. But that was more so when I was younger. As I started getting older, I started wearing it a bit more natural, mm-hmm. more braid styles until, I'm going to say, how old was I? I want to say about 20. Mm-hmm. I just said, I'm just going to be natural from now on. Yeah. Have a good day at school. That was my brother. <laughs> hey, Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I was just kind of like over trying to keep up with straight hair when I even even went because I like it. I it's very pretty. I'm not saying anything about straight hair. Yeah. I just wanted something as easy as possible. Yeah. So if I had hair who that can be wet. And yes, it's not gonna. It's still gonna mess up the style I may have it in. Mm-hmm. But it's easier to get back to that style from this already state. Exactly. Than wet, straightened hair. Yeah. Now I gotta go through a whole slew of steps to get it back to that. And I just, I'm lazy. I didn't want to do that all the time. I feel it. <laughs> I it was just like, I'm gonna have. I come here and twist, and then do different pinup styles if I feel like mm-hmm. it. I could blow it out a little if I choose to, which I barely ever do. And just kind of do things from there. Mm-hmm. It's it's really based on me not wanting to do much with my hair. Yeah. If I didn't feel like it and just be free with having it twist out and let it blow in the wind. I don't yes. know. It's fine. <laughs> and I feel that. And it's so funny because I've heard so many women say, black women say, you know, my natural hair is too much work. You know, because they want it to be super easy. Too much. You can't always put too much. Right. Because like, it just is. You can't do it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's a lot of work. Yeah. I always say it's a lot. But yeah. you, if you want to accept it fully, then even if it's not something that you end up doing, I think everyone should at least but like have the experience of going natural for a bit just to understand your hair a bit better mm-hmm. and i think Just that's it you need to do it yes for, for whatever reason yes you know how to do it if you need to that's it exactly you don't have to stay you could stay with whatever style you want weaves all of that mm-hmm. wigs if that's what that's what you like that's what you like that's right personal style exactly wrong with any of that exactly but uh, if, if you like that personal style, but then you think there's something wrong with you, that's where the problem lies. That's true. And again, a lot of that Eurocentric features that make you prettier, mm-hmm. if that's why you're doing that, that's where the issue lies. Right. Not that you like it. You Thank can you. like straight hair all you want. Mm-hmm. If that's like the fling it, that's what, like, you like that motion, <laughs> more power to you. No, thank but you. <laughs> but if you're doing it solely based off of what people are going to perceive you as right. because of it, yes, that's the only issue that that is connected to it. Right, right. So Fergie says, me being the only one who has my hair type in my family, had to learn that my hair type wasn't terrible. My hair was perfect just the way it is, just like everyone else's. Mm-hmm. And then Raylene yep. pretty much says, I second that, I'm mixed, black and white, and it took me a long time to realize I didn't have straight hair like my dad or kinky hair like my mom, and that's okay, right? Yeah. 
Because we just get, mm-hmm. we just get what we get. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we just get what we get. And, um, you got it? And, you um. That's the crazy thing about DNA. Right. Feature from generations past. Exactly. And people really it's believe that it's just you. your mom and your dad that made you. I'm like, no. Every person before you has made you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, but then we get into the topic of people having this issue with black women wearing weaves and wearing wigs because they believe, they believe that the reason why we wear wigs and we wear weaves is because we want to be perceived as more Eurocentric when the reality is for a lot of women, it's easier. It's better for your natural hair because it's a protective style because you're not manipulating it every day. What are you applying heat to? That weave. What are you, yep, you know, your actual hair. exactly. And that's so much better for your natural hair, but you know, and I, I can guarantee, just like you said, that there are some women who do wear those styles because they want to be perceived as more Eurocentric. Mm-hmm. And again, that's them, but as a whole, as a community, nah, yeah. our, our biggest thing is caring for our I don't hair. Have to touch it. Yes. I don't have to touch it. That's why we wear braids. Cause I mean, how, how honestly are braids any different than a weave? First of all, your hair still has to be braided to put on, to put, to apply yeah, a weave in the first place. Intricate, intricate all <laughs> in there. Yes. Yes. But I mean, like, for someone like yourself, who has long, thick hair, I would assume that braiding your hair in, like, box braids or, like, you know, uh, what's it called? Knotless braids or whatever would be easier than braiding that super intricate um, cornrow pattern on your head because your hair is so thick. Like I already know, as soon as they get to the center of it, you're gonna have like that much of a tail <laughs> that they gotta tuck somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've actually never had a weave, so I can't particularly say. But me neither. I've only seen pictures. <laughs> uh, what I have experienced is you know doing uh, cornrows, mm-hmm. even, even with extra hair. Mm-hmm. And having to do multiple rows, like I was never able just to do the straight back long. I always wanted that. I always wanted that. Just, you right. know, straight from here all the way down mm-hmm. and then have them be long and then do like two braided pigtails. I always wanted to do that. Why can't, why I never could. Why can't we do that? On my head. Why can't we do that? Because, because my hair wouldn't fit on my head. Which I would have to do two rows at least. Hmm. I'm trying to investigate that. <laughs> hey, if you can, I haven't tried it since I was like 14. I gave up like asking people, could you do it? We gon' we gon' now if you can do it, baby girl. Let me let me let me come through one day. Age joy. Yes, to have that. I want your inner child to be happy. Your inner teenager to be happy. Yes, that yeah. is my goal. That is my goal. Um, Fergie says facts is easier. And then Raylene says, "Bruh, I know, right? The people who believe that it's like one, it's a protective style." Two, black women have been told for years their hair isn't beautiful and to wear wigs, straighten their perm by the same people who say, why do they wear wigs? Just be natural. Oh my God. The facts. The facts. You tell us we're supposed to do this because that's what's professional. Right. (gasps) Oh. And then you demonize our hair. Yes. It's not professional. That doesn't look like a, a, a business setting type hairstyle. Exactly. It's not going to work in a conference room right. or a boardroom. <clears throat> that doesn't look like... And then tell us again, yes, you're you're hating yourself because you're not wearing Yes! My favorite. Why don't you just love yourself? You don't love your hair? You don't love this? You don't love that? And I'm like, Ugh. but babe, you brought up, you brought, you brought it up. You said professional. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need everybody in the chat. If you watch if you're in the chat, if you're on YouTube right now, type in into Google yes. professional business hairstyle. You ain't even gotta put you ain't have, you don't even have to put woman or female. Nope. All of the results nope. are gonna be women and all of them are gonna be white women like wearing buns. All of them. Mm-hmm. All of them. Yep. So if that doesn't tell us as black women that our the way that our hair grows out of our scalp is not professional or good enough or whatever, I don't know what does. I mean, and then Fergie says, the same people who try to do the same hairstyle to make it trendy. Exactly. Exactly. It's like everyone else gets to choose it is acceptable except us. Mm Mm-hmm. You know? 
I can't tell you how many videos uh, <laughs> my Discord has sent me, like, from Twitter. This lady... Okay, so... There's a way that you can, it's it's kind of like a weave, but not really. It's more like a feed-in kind of style. But you essentially braid your hair up like you kind of would a weave. But you can do like straight back cornrows um, and then tuck whatever tails in. And then essentially you get, I don't know if it's if it's, um, if it's human hair or if it's uh, synthetic hair. But you like feed it into your cornrow and you like loop it out so it's just the hair itself. Mm -hmm. This lady, this white lady did it. Her hair looked like a pack of top ramen. <laughs> Oh no! But the strangest thing to me was, she already had long hair. Like her hair was a decent length, and I'm like, well, why don't you just curl your hair? Like you can, like if you if you desire curly hair that bad, you can get a perm, you know, and your hair will be curly until you reapply your perm or whatever. Or you can just go to a great hairstylist and you can curl your hair. Or you can do what we do, which is use like curl formers and some good old mousse. Mm -hmm. Go to sleep. And your hair will be curly, you know what I mean? But she had this, like, big, weird... Oh, wait a minute. I was supposed to be showing a video. I done already forgot. Oh, the, the clips I sent you? Yes, I was supposed to be showing y'all a video. Okay, so wait a minute. Before we continue, I need to show y'all, because again, you know, this is psychologically based, y'all. <laughs> Psychological <laughs> conversation. <laughs> I need to show y'all a video. Okay. All right, here we go. Which doll is the pretty doll? Which doll is the nice doll? Which doll is the bad doll? Which doll is the nice doll? And why is that doll pretty? Because she's white and he has two eyes. Which doll is the ugly doll? Why is that doll ugly? Because he... Because... He's black. Which doll looks most like you? Like me? Yeah, which one looks like you? And that one. Okay. That doll. Why is she the bad child? Because she's black, black. And why is he the ugly child? Because he, he looks like he's white. Why is he the dumb child? Because she has dark brown skin. Why is she the bad child? Because she makes fun of everybody else's skin Show me the child who has the skin color most adults like. And show me the child who has the skin color most adults don't like. Child. Dumb child. <laughs> okay, why is she the dumb child? Because she has black skin. Only show me the teen child. Hmm? Why is he the teen child? child? Show me the bad child. Yes. Why is he the bad child? Okay. Show me the ugly child. Why is he the ugly child? Yes. And can you show me the doll that looks bad? Okay. And can you give, and why does that look bad? 
together the black. Hmm. And why do you think that's a nice doll? Because she is white. And can you give me the doll that looks like you? <laughs> Alright, we're going to watch one more real quick. I think this one's the more recent one. Hold on, DJ. So it says, the doll test is a psychological experiment designed in the 1940s in the USA to test the degree of marginalization felt by African American children caused by prejudice, discrimination, and racial segregation. We have recreated it with Italian children. Quale bambola è bianca? Quale bambola è nera? Quale delle due è bella? Mm, questa. Qual è quella bella? Qual è quella brutta? E qual è quella buona? Quale è cattiva? Qual è buona? Lei. Perché è buona? Perché hai gli occhi celesti? Quale è cattiva? Perché è cattiva? Perché è tutto, tutto nero. E qual è la bambola che ti somiglia di più? It's easier to break an atom than a prejudice. Quale bambola è nera? È offeso. Tu. Perché mi hai chiamato nera? <laughs> mi offendi perché altri bambini mi hanno offeso con cattiveria. Mmm. Ora sto mi sta guardando sto. Oh, sto That was awesome. Nope, not yet. Okay, so All right. there's a lot to unpack there. I know, right? One of uh, Hold on. the things I love this. about that experiment is that it showed, well, it's actually used as a mean to discuss implicit biases compared to explicit biases. Mm -hmm. And that the ones that we hold that we sometimes don't even realize that we just apply to every day. Yes. Quick, quick question. Can you tell us the difference between explicit and implicit? Yes. Okay. Well, that's, a, that's what I was getting to. Okay. okay. Implicit lies in what we, we kind of just automatically apply. Mm. We don't knowingly make that decision. It's something that we so strongly believe that it's a norm for us and that's just an automatic base reaction explicit is when you know what you're doing you know you're like i'm being mean to you right now or i'm being rude to you because you're black and i'm making that decision thank and you for I'm the babies. specifically going to call that out right but implicit are the microaggressions mm. the little things that we automatically believe just because we don't even know where we got that information from and this experiment shows that these children hold those implicit biases not even on purpose just based off of maybe a classroom setting maybe their teacher is nicer to the, the lighter fair mm. complex students 
Yeah. And then they are harsher to the darker complexed students, and they feel that they absorb that. Or maybe in the shows that they get exposed to, mm-hmm. it could be any so single person or a slew of things collectively that give these young children the automatic re- um, understanding that there is something wrong with the child if they're darker complexed. Right. And not that they've actually processed that and said there's something wrong with a child who's dark, dark and complected, mm-hmm. but that is just what they've learned implicitly. And another thing that I love about this is that you see, as the, like the children's faces, it's like it's dawning on them weight. Wow. Yes, and and the, the music in the second video was definitely very like leading emotionally. <laughs> oh, oh, however, yes, yes like they were like, mm-hmm. like, especially when they asked them the questions about good and bad. Um, nice and mean, and then they ask which one looks like you. Exactly. And it was like, oh, it dawns on them. My little like, heart, yeah. Yeah, and of course, it's, it's it's hurtful that they have to process that and deal with that emotionally. Like, you don't want them to have to go through that. Yeah. But you end up having to, to break through those untrue things that we yeah. have been taught to believe. Exactly, exactly. Um, welcome in Real Dogadi. I appreciate you being here, my love. I gotta pop into one of your streams and hang out for a little bit soon. But thank you for being here. Thank you for the biddies. Um, I'm feeling great. I barely slept last night, but I'm gonna take a nap today. <laughs> Y'all better believe it. Uh, Fergie yeah, says, both. right? Fergie says, this is something that I've had to talk to my biracial children about. They have dealt with this mm-hmm. from kids, from school, and sadly, my grandmother. It's, we it's... both know that exact <sighs> experience. Oh. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. No black. Right. No black. No black. No black. No it, black. In, in the thickest Haitian accent known to man. In the no black. Thickest Haitian accent. Right. And, and even more recently, my aunt in law, my husband's aunt, met DJ for the first time. This was like, it's probably been about a year, you know? The first thing she asked, and now mind you, her her prejudice is deep. First thing she asked me, is his dad white? I'm like, what? Like, hello? You know what I'm, like, why, why? Why Why is that the first question you asked me about my child? Why? Friend, how does that carry, I mean, it, I just have so many questions. <laughs> like, why does it matter? You know what I mean? To our point of all of us discussing mm-hmm. the fact that melanin comes, or black people come in all different shades. And you know that our shades change. You know what I mean? We a different shade. Yeah. Right, the disrespect. Yeah. We a different shade in the winter than we are in the summer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, full-blown got to buy new foundation for the seasons because we adjust. Girl, that's why I don't bother. Right. I'm saying. The only reason why I knew is because I've recently had to take, which you can't even tell anymore, had to take my bracelets off because baby boy keeps grabbing at them and I don't want them to break. And I saw my tan lines on my wrist. <laughs> Grover goes, dang, you light-skinned. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not, I swear. I'm not light-skinned. <laughs> but, you know, again, all of us in the check-in attest to the fact that we come in all different shades. Like, we already know this is a fact. But mm-hmm. it just feels like, and I, I think it's just that we want to believe that we are so far removed from people who believe this. But again, me and Hannah's grandmother and great grandmother, mm-hmm. like that was, it was a part oh, of oh, them. The, the great grandmother was worse. Oh yeah. Um, Very much so. Because she, she was the full flesh French woman. And who literally the fairest of us all. Literally. The fairest of us all. The fairest of us all. A European white woman. Mm-hmm. And she had the audacity to marry a Haitian black man. Yep. And they disowned her. Mm-hmm. So that 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 knife right very deep in her mm-hmm. that uh like, oh no. Nope, I'm never gonna have that problem again. Right. Absolutely. Not, Absolutely. I already lost everything. You're not right. worth it. Right. So. Exactly. Exactly. But I mean it's 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 so uh I mean there's just so many things I can say. I appreciate the fact that we were able to watch these videos um, to include the children because, you know, I have a biracial child, um, Fergie has biracial children, and, you know, I don't think that his dad recognizes, well, I know that he doesn't recognize the kinds of things that he's going to experience growing up. I know that he doesn't. And 
his uh, privilege is so deep and his ignorance is so insurmountable that those are not going to be things that he addressed, which is fine. I got it. Me and my family, we got it. Grover, he got it. Like, it's it's fine. We're going to be right there by his side helping him, you know. But something that I wanted to share, which was so, so ignorance really is bliss. It really is. You get to just live in a land of rainbows <laughs> or maybe not rainbows, you know, depending on where your ignorance is. <laughs> maybe yeah. it's just blue skies. But anywho, I saw this post. I'm in this uh, this group on Facebook. It's, it's called Black Moms. And um, there's like 80, 87,000 members or something, just a ton of people. So, the, so all the women, you know, they post regularly because there's so many members. I just read a post yesterday that said that one of, you know, kind of to Hannah's point, the her her daughter is seven and her peer, her classmate is eight. Her daughter's classmate attempted to rub the black off of her skin because she never saw someone like her before. So, and I wish I could pull up the post. Like, I wish I could just find it. I should have saved it. But this is how Baby Girl responded. That's melanin. Mm. It protects my skin from the sun. Our skin is different. And that's okay. And she said more. And I really wish I could, like, quote Baby Girl verbatim. But Mom was so proud, of yeah. course, because she was like, my baby listens to me. <laughs> like, I'm telling her these things. No. Like, she mentioned something about her ancestors and just had this beautiful response to this girl. Ooh, I love it. Right? Who tried to yeah. rub the black off her skin. Like, there was no popping off. There was no, mm. you know, our typical responses because we respond out of trying to protect ourselves. So, oftentimes, we respond in a way that's like, I'll beat you down, you know, instead of, right, the response sounds so amazing. Um, mm -hmm. She did She did a beautiful job. Like, it was like baby girl was just, like, regurgitating the things that her mom had explicit, like, oh, explicitly said it. to her. Yeah. So it was really, really it. wonderful That's to read. Beautiful. Like, I, I really should have taken a screenshot because of today's conversation. But, um... Mm -hmm. I mean, she's done an amazing job instilling... Yes self-love in her daughter yes that and and amazing. as a parent you know what i mean to to hear your child say those things you're like you are listening like i told you those things <laughs> like i've heard i've heard dj do it like right i've heard dj do it sometimes when um like i'm asking him to calm down and breathe and stuff like that like he'll say it to the baby which i think is so adorable or he'll call him pop and say you're okay you're okay I'm like, ah, ah, ah. anywho um, Fergie says, my oldest is very light and my grandmother tells me that she's the prettiest of all my kids. Mm -hmm. My oldest said, well, I don't understand why you think that because my brother and sister look just like me. We're all the same color. We're all black. Let me tell you, I had tears in my eyes. I love it so much, Fergie. I love it. Raylene says, that sounds so sweet. Right. It does. It sounds so sweet. And another kind of layer to this is like, I was so reluctant to send pictures of my child, of Kairu, when he was first born. Because the only thing, and again, I can only talk about black people because we're black. The only thing that black people always comment on when babies are born is their skin color and who they look like. That's it. I mean, and there's really nothing else you can say because, you know, he's, he's a fresh little human. He doesn't really have a personality a yet. Blob. Yeah, he's just a little blob, you know, he doesn't have a personality yet, he's not really doing much. But just hearing that is so frustrating to me that I was reluctant to even send pictures of my child because I just didn't want to hear it. And even even now, every single time, oh my goodness, he looks just like his brother. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And I'm like, actually, they both look just like me. And I look just like the rest of my family because Hannah and I look like sisters. My cousin Jordan looked like my brother. Like, our g family genes are very thick, very strong. Yes, they are. And that's just it. Like, my twin brother's kids look just like me. They look just like my son, which, Honestly, genetically, they're closer. Had a kid. They're just the same kid. Right. The same they're child. Different stages. Right. <laughs> just duplicated. That's it. Just duplicated. It's so that's true. It. Like. It's so true. Yeah. So, to, to, to know that, you know, that that's what people are going to comment on while my child is just brand new. For DJ to not hear this all the time, which, you know, I don't know what he gets from that. In a way, it's like, okay, yeah, he looks like me because he's my brother. He doesn't really call him his brother yet. Sometimes he just calls him, like, my baby, which is even cuter. <laughs> but, you know, now I'm thinking, like, how is that going to impact the way he sees himself and the way that he sees his family? You know what I mean? Um... And then when Kairu starts growing up, you know, how's that going to impact him? Because him and DJ don't have the same father. 
you know, how mm-hmm. is that going to play a role in the implicit bias that they might have? Because who knows when they when they start growing up, you know, whose complexion is going to be different, lighter, darker, whatever. Not that it matters to me, but that's what everybody always comments on. And so to see these videos of these children, even in Italy or Italian children, I'm assuming they were in Italy, um, mm-hmm. to have these same thoughts about, you know, and they showed a bunch of different kinds of children. Like it, they weren't all black children. One of them was definitely, you know, of Asian descent. Uh, one of them looked like they might have been of Latin descent, you know, like, mm-hmm. so to see all of them pick the the black doll as the one that looks like them, but also choose that doll as the one that was mean, bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I forgot the other adjectives they used. That's really mean, disheartening. Bad, um, ugly. Mm-hmm. Ugly. Right. And then to see, you know, the looks on their faces when they really had to kind of sit with, I believe that that doll is bad and ugly and mean, but in I also comparison. Be- in comparison to the white doll, but I also believe that that doll looks the most like me. Yeah. You know, See, like... And that's why there's an importance of understanding that there's not always going to be a list <coughs> of b- better. Better right. or worse. It's not always better or worse. Mm-hmm. It's different. Yeah. Different is okay. Different is absolutely like okay. like what Fergie was saying about her, her babies. Mm-hmm. You don't... Yeah, okay. So... One might be fairer than the other. So mm-hmm. right. That's just her set of beauty. That's her. Exactly. She's beautiful because of all the different pieces that accumulate to her being her. Mm-hmm. And then your other child is beautiful for all of the things that accumulate to them being them. Yeah. That's it. Exactly. There's no, she's prettier because of this. No. They're both beautiful. Right. Or like you said, prettier than. Personal mm-hmm. feeling. Mm-hmm. Personal like... things. That's it. It's not either or. Mm-hmm. You don't need to raise up someone by telling someone else that they're worse. That part. You need to be okay with saying you're beautiful and so are you, even yes. if they look nothing alike. Two exactly. separately, completely different people can both be beautiful. Three better preach. Completely whatever, situ- like differences. Yes. It doesn't matter. Yeah, absolutely. We don't need to say this is pretty, so this is bad. No. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then that takes my mind to the compliments that we give children based on their gender, right? Mm -hmm. We tell, we tell little girls that they're beautiful and they're sweet and they're kind, but we tell little boys that they're strong and they're smart Mm -hmm. and they're fast. You know what I mean? Uh, real quick, Fergie said, my mom, my mom said, uh, my mom said the, all the same, just the printer me got more toner as it printed out more ba- I'm done Whew. my mom said they're all the same <laughs> just the printer me got more toner as it printed out more babies I'm so done oh my gosh the audacity but again Whew. now we have these um, gender based and we're not even going to talk about gender which we, we will have an, a whole other episode on gender because Hannah going to yeah, educate y'all that, that, that's a, we going to <laughs> we going to talk about that yeah, for sure <laughs> we going to talk about gender um but yeah, now we now we get into this, you know. Now our baby girls are constantly being reminded that their looks are what matter. What people can see are what matter. While our little boys are being told, "Oh, you're so creative. You're so smart. You're so f- excuse me. You're so fast. You um you know whatever whatever you know." While uh, I mean, this just opens up a whole new can of worms. You know, we have an issue with little boys playing with dolls. But then, mm-hmm. like Hannah and I were talking, yes, was it yesterday? No, it was the day before, day before. about day before. Um, about men being nurturers, and how in that same black mom group that I'm telling y'all about, someone had asked, "How would y'all feel?" And y'all can tell me in the chat. Everyone is in the chat right now. How would you feel if you took your child to a daycare, and there were one or more male daycare providers working in the daycare, and so many women were like, "Oh no, I wouldn't be comfortable with that." I wouldn't be comfortable with that. And I'm like, what, why? What is it about having a man care for children that you see as incorrect or, um, I don't know, wrong or, I mean, there's a plethora of different mm-hmm. words, but, um, 
Yeah, sh- break break it down for us, Hannah. Tell t- tell me tell me, share. <laughs> My thing is, it's like, of course, you're skeptical of the place you're about to leave your baby at. Of course, that right. goes without saying. But you go to a place and you feel it out, no matter what. Mm-hmm. So, if you leave out that box of, oh, he's not gonna give it to me automatically. Like if you automatically put that, there's a problem because it's there are men there. Mm-hmm then you're going to see it through a negative lens automatic instead of being like, okay, what do I feel from this person? What is the environment here? Mm -hmm. That's what you normally do. Right. But if you automatically put that negative lens on it, you're going to see it negatively no matter what. Mm -hmm. And even if there was nothing wrong there, right? even if that would have you don't know that person could have been the best person to, um, to take care of your kid in your stead. Mm-hmm. But you just put that 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 blockade, mm-hmm. that lens, and and now your child's gonna learn that. Yeah. Because then they're only gonna learn that these certain people are safe, and these are the only kinds of people. Because your your baby's gonna learn that. Exactly. Exactly. So Raleen says, that's completely fine. For example, men can be doctors and teachers in school who look after children, so that's normal for them to be child carers too. Fergie says, to be honest, I'd be excited because some men, sad to say it, do a better job than women in daycares nowadays. The people I see in the news harming children in daycare are almost always women, and it's upsetting. And I I hear you, Mm -hmm. Fergie. And and Raleen, to your point, you know, um, I believe when it comes to to men being doctors, sometimes it's like people over-sexualize it. Well, like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. I can have a man, a man as a doctor, but not as a gynecologist. And it's like, okay, fam, yeah. once again, conversation for another time. To Fergie's point, people don't even recognize that the reason why uh, what's happening is proportionally women is because 95% of people that work with children are women. If you go exactly. into any school campus, when I was working at the mm-hmm. elementary school I was working at, it was a K-6 through regular elementary school. There were two male teachers two Hmm. two y'all no three there were three Uh, yes there were three i substitute top for all of them (laughs) there were three of them (laughs) one's a fourth grade teacher one was a third grade teacher and one was a fifth and sixth grade sped teacher just three that's it babe just three you know and uh it's like both of these things are issues, right? The fact that we have a lack of representation of women in STEM, right? Um, science, technology, engineering, and math, right? Mm-hmm. We have my son is barking at the dogs downstairs. Uh, we have a lack of representation there, and then we have a lack of men, male representation, in nurturing and like child based fields you know what i mean like mm-hmm. child care teaching etc cetera, etc cetera. not only that like we already have the struggle of having a lack of of black representation in places so it's like you know black female representation in certain spaces is extremely sparse black male representation mm-hmm. in, in certain places is extremely sparse and all of us who live and have gone to school in public school or private school you know outside of our home can attest to having a teacher or a coach who was deeply influential to our life. You know what I mean? Um, so the fact that they just don't exist. DJ! I don't know what he's yelling about. Uh, crud. Trent thought I just lost. Go ahead, Hannah. I, I think oh, no. he was going to say something. <laughs> oh, no. I hate when that happens. It's gone. Oh, you were on a roll. I was on a roll, y'all. <laughs> Repeat what you said last. Sometimes it'll spark it. I don't remember. <laughs> I was saying. Like, like, I was saying the lack of representation of black men and teaching. Oh, I was gonna say. Uh, to our point of you know, black people being perceived as less than right. This is something that we still have to fight against. Just existing as a black person. <clears throat> excuse me, you're seen as less than. Being a black male, you're often perceived as a threat. In that same elementary school that I worked at, and I think I shared this with you, Hannah, I may not have, there was this dude, little dude, like physically short. He was a sixth grader. He's a black kid. 
black boy. And um, he was always seen as like the problem student, right? So when I would sub his class, people would tell me, oh, you got to work out for, you got to watch out for that student because he's like, he gets upset really easily. He's this, he's that, he's this, he's that. And just thinking about him, you know, I, I spoke to him like I'm talking to y'all. If he did something that hurt my feelings, I would totally call it out. Like, yo, when you said that, it hurt my feelings. And I don't want to speak to you for the rest of the day. He'd be like, for real, Miss Taylor? I'm like, yeah, bye. <laughs> and I'd walk away. <laughs> that's the natural consequence, right? The natural consequence of you mm-hmm. um, saying something that's completely, you know, out of pocket and just unnecessary and hurt my feelings mm-hmm. is that I don't want to speak to you anymore. I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to scream at you. I'm not going to take you to the office. And none mm-hmm. of those things are going to do anything because you get sent to the office for just existing. You get sent to the office yeah. for taking too long on a bathroom break. You know what I mean? So I know that that's not going to work for you. Said all that to say, I can only imagine the impact if his teacher was a black male, right? Mm -hmm. Because a black male, especially one who is healed or healing, would see himself in that student and would be able to have conversations with him and bring him up in a way, you know what I mean, where he felt seen and he didn't feel so alone because there weren't that many black kids on that campus, period. So... Mm -hmm. Now that I think of it, of those three male teachers, none of them were black. None of them. So that by itself is an issue. You know what I mean? Um, Real quick, Raylene says, men being in more nurturing fields would absolutely be amazing. Um, It could inspire those children to, one, feel comfortable with male teachers, and two, inspire them to be cares in the future. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because that's really what it comes down to is helping them feel comfortable and knowing that this is okay. You know, mm-hmm. instead of like you like we've mentioned, you know, just going to um, women for everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Raylene says, "Oh my God, I've had that. I teach piano, and during training, the supervisors would always say, watch out for the black or minority child.' And that child was always completely normal. Always. Usually, what they're reacting to is something that the the, the teacher or the person in the uh, in the leadership role in the setting yep is doing right exactly exactly good morning buddy yeah they don't want to talk about that they don't want to say am i doing something that's triggering this child right am i just assuming that this child is going to you know be extra or be bad or whatever and then you know then you have to check your you have to have the awareness to check your own bias Mm -hmm. what am i perceiving as bad you know, yes. is it asking too many questions? Is it um, the fact that they learn differently? I mean, there's a plethora of mm-hmm. different things. That I mean, and there's so much research to support this. The fact that black children are disciplined differently. They're really not disciplined. They're typically punished, which that's a whole other yes. conversation, the difference between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they're typically punished in the classroom instead of disciplined. They're not taught anything as far as, you know, why mm-hmm. their behavior is unacceptable or why it hurts other people, or whatever, whatever. Um, it's a lot. I yes. would love to continue this conversation for, like, 17 hours, but I don't know what my child is doing. Uh, oh, yeah. So we're going we to wrap it up for today. But I appreciate you all so much for being here. I thank all of you for contributing in the chat and for being a part of the conversation. Once again, if you're catching this replay on YouTube, please subscribe. Just hit the button. Just just subscribe. You know you know you want more of this. You know you want more of this. You got to do it. Gotta yes, do it. absolutely. Yes. Um, everyone, again, this is my sister cousin, Hannah Mae. She has her degree in psychology, and she's an amazing person. She will be back on the stream, just like Diana Robinson, who was with us yesterday. Um, if any of you are interested in being a part of the conversation, please let me know. Tomorrow, Spudwitch will be on the stream. I don't know what we're going to talk about yet, but we're going to talk about something. Uh, you are so welcome for this chat. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been phenomenal. I appreciate you so much, Hannah. Yeah. Thank you for making time for me, sis. Well, thank you so much we for having me. This was, this is great. I mean, we've had this kind of conversation before and it's just better now that people can comment on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I look forward to doing this again. Yes, we're going to have, we're going to have that gender conversation. Probably sometime oh, next yes. week. We need to do that. Yes. It's going yes. down. <laughs> but yes. Absolutely. Thank you, my love. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you. And um, do y'all think I should start a Discord channel? Should I Should I make a Discord? Just tell me in the chat real quick. Because I don't know how to do that. 
I probably have Hannah help me. <laughs> yes, Frankie says yes with like 18 exclamation points. <laughs> yes. Okay, I will do that. Um, because yes, please make one. Okay. Oh, uh, thank you, Rayleigh. I want to be in there. Yes, Hannah. Hannah, go be in there too. Hannah, download Discord. <laughs> Well, I have it already. Oh, perfect. That, that got me through uh, COVID class. Yes. We collectively would have uh, group chats. There and you go. We, I had I had discourse for every different class that I had. I love yes. that. I love that. Dude, Grover's computer is constantly pinging because he's in like 37 discords. <laughs> and he and I are in like three together. Like Spudwitch has one, Fergie has one, Jones has one, and then there's Black Mafia, which I think all of us are in. Um mm-hmm. But yeah, his computer's if his computer sound is on, it's constantly going off, and I always think it's like oh my God. one of the ones that I'm in, and it's not. And I'm like, I forget he's in like DJ discords and like musician discords and all this stuff. So yes, I will I will create one. Um, y'all, my merch is coming out. It's it's almost ready. I'm waiting for my samples to be delivered. Um, I'm working on copywriting some things, my phrase, and then yes, I will make it available to everyone. But yeah, I want to make sure that I get those samples first because I got to make sure they're good. Anywho, I said I was going to end the stream and I'm still talking. Hannah, I love you. Um, I love you too. I'll call you in a couple hours. I love you all that came to the stream. Thank you for being here. And um, yeah, I will see y'all tomorrow as per usual. Tomorrow the stream is going to be at 8 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. So I love you all. Um, Raylene, what time is that for you? Maybe like 5? I think, or 4 p.m. Raylene's on the, in the UK. I, th- okay. I think it's 4 p.m., I want to say. But yes, we'll figure it out. I love you all. Have a beautiful day. Hannah, you don't have to leave, but I'm going to end the stream. Um, I'll see all you streamers tomorrow. Bye.